This is Kankul Faith Assembly with Pastor Gospower Edo, a man of God loaded with messages that are targeted at Rishi minds and with the mandate of liberating people from all forms of frustrations and oppression. To give you understanding, tell him to speak to you, tell him to quicken you. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning because it's the time that you have been for us. We are here, we are asking Lord God that you will strengthen us to hear you and to understand and do according to the words. Father, thank you because we know you want In Jesus' name, we pray. There are things that define the man. The things that make you to get contaminated. Things that when you are contaminated and defiled, your prayers will no longer be answered. Things that make you look a sinner in the sight of God. Things that make you receive a kind of rejection before God. These are things that define the man. But we are not going to mention only the things that define the man. But we are also going to give a solution how to come out of those things. So the purpose of this message is for you to know those things that defy and how to come out of them. Look at Mighty chapter 15, verse 18 to 20. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from come forth from the heart and they defy the man. For out of the heart proceeded evil thoughts. Mothers, adulteries, fornications, theft, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with or wash hands, defile not a man. Jesus was telling the people here about those things that defy. The things that defy. Number one thing we want to consider here is evil thoughts that are constantly fired into our hearts by Satan. Satan constantly fires arrows of evil thoughts into our hearts. This is a very, very sensitive weapon that Satan uses to destroy people of God. Every human being, no matter how spiritual you are, Satan so will use this weapon of making you to think evil, of bringing experiences that are not conducive. It could be a problem that you had with somebody some time ago. Satan so will bring their thoughts into your mind. They will begin to manipulate you. They will begin to seize, twist you. Evil thoughts. And they are sources of defilement. When well, we run the red in mighty chapter 15, verse 18, it says, But those things which proceeded out of the mouth come forth from their hearts, and they defy the man. The heart is the center where these thoughts are manufactured. The heart of men is the center of where evil thoughts, evil communication are manufactured. Please, the Bible gave us a recommendation in Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. And I read verse 23. What did he say? He said, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Keep thy heart diligence. Please, I want to make you understand something. The heart of man is the center of all evil thoughts. And for you to overcome the power of evil thought that work against the soul and spirit of body, you have to keep your heart diligent. So keep thy heart, keep thy heart with all diligence. That is to say, make sure that you guide, you protect your heart. And when the evil thoughts are brewing and coming up as much as possible, 
do something. What will you do? Cover your heart with the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus counters every evil thought. The blood of Jesus neutralizes every evil thought. And when evil thoughts are coming around, like it's happened in Exodus, when the children of Israel were to depart from Egypt, the Lord instructed them. He says, slay a man and get the blood in the lintel of your houses. And when the angel of death comes, when evil thoughts come, when manipulation comes, when you see the blood, you do what? It will pass over you. Please, I want you to take this to heart very seriously. That evil thoughts have no respect for anyone. If you like, let your spiritual level be so high up in the highest. Evil thoughts will come upon you. But if you return them, then it will cause and lead to another thing. The reason why we are asked to keep all our heart with diligence is so that when we observe that the enemy of the little evil and any thought is coming, we have to quickly jettison it, quickly reject it, throw it away. How do you throw it away? I've told you, guide your heart and your mind. When you see that this thought that is coming to me is becoming too frequent, I don't like it. Say, blood of Jesus. I take in the blood of Jesus. I swallow the blood of Jesus. I drink the blood of Jesus. And that is the only way you can overcome. Please. Nobody is exempted from the power of evil thoughts. Because certainly, you may be offended by somebody directly or indirectly. Or an idea may have come that somebody contradicted that was not to your taste. And you might be having that thoughts. I'm going to plan him. I'm going to deal with him. I'm going to deal with her. Once the evil thoughts come, please, the medicine, the cure, is the blood of Jesus. Exodus chapter 12. Verse 22 to 23. Exodus chapter 12. <coughs> Verse 22 to 23. And ye shall take a bunch of his and dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the linter and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of the house until the morning, verse 23. For the Lord will pass through the smile of Jacob, and when he sees the blood upon the victim, and on the two sides of both, the Lord will pass over the door, and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Praise the Lord. You know the Bible says that two cannot walk together and say they be agreed. Evil thoughts and the blood of Jesus cannot stay in the same room. Once the evil thought comes your way, when you neutralize, you pump in the blood of Jesus upon your body yourself. Before you know it, evil thought will disappear. Please take this to heart. Always begin to cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. It is a medicine that can destroy every kind of thoughts that is not of God. And that is the reason why. What we are saying this morning is the thoughts that comes upon the man, upon the woman, upon everyone, sometimes they are evil. And nobody is exempted. Say, I'm above being manipulated by thoughts. Every human being on earth, Satan will bring in the thoughts that will make him to look like he gets bitter, he gets angry, he will up his voice or whatever it is. That is number one. Number two thing that defines the man and how we can come out is the words that proceed from our mouth. The words that proceed from our mouth. If you look at that mighty chapter 15 verse 11. Mighty chapter 15 verse 11. It says, not that which goeth into the mouth that defines the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth that defines the man. The words of our mouth they are very, very, very dangerous. Anything you speak, please take notes. The thing that will define you will hinder your prayer from being answered. We will, 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 will hurt your relationship with God. We will make you to be unholy. Apart from the evil thoughts, what comes out of your mouth? That is to say, even in most cases, if the thought in your heart, you are able to harbor them, work on them, 
and you didn't speak out what comes, what is in the heart to the world, you are saved. You will stand the chance to be safer than somebody who talks anyhow. And in most cases, if you have an evil thought in your mind, but you have a way of expressing it, not in bitterness, but to make that matter leave your heart, you stand the chance of being safer than the somebody who keeps it in heart. That is to say, the thoughts in your heart, when you have them, you keep them. You don't speak them out and get them off your heart. Or if you try them with the blood of Jesus, you will be in trouble. But if you speak and begin to talk things that can defy you, it is what you say that Satan will hold to judge you. And that is Satan is very, very crafty. He uses the words of men. I told you some time ago that every word that is spoken is registered in the atmosphere. When Satan wants to deal with you, go to the atmosphere and pick the word that they have said. He says, look at the word you said so so time. But oh, I thought that oh, you will pick the word in a signal and look at the word. And so, whatever a man speaks, Satan uses it against the woman. That is why I'm saying this morning. That we should mind what we say. We should restrain ourselves from speaking those things in the Lord of God. Look at Luke chapter 19, verse 22. Luke chapter 19, verse 22. And he said unto him, Out of thy own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knowest that I was an astemer, taken up that I laid not down, and repent that I did not so. He said, with thy own mouth, what command of thy own mouth will I judge you? Many people, when they appear before the seat and the judgment of God, all those things that they said and they said carelessly, they are going to account for them. Therefore, if you will remain undefined, you must restrain your tongue from speaking things that defy. That is why in Proverbs chapter 10, in verse 19, we were instructed that we should refrain our tongues from speaking that which is not good. Look at Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19. In the multitude of words, they wanted not sin, but he that refrained his lips is wise. Refrained his lips. Keep your tongue, your lips, your mouth from speaking and talking. No wonder Isaiah said that I'm a man of unclean lips. That God touched me. Please, I have told you, this is what comes out of your mouth. This is what you speak. It is safer to keep quiet. So yeah, I'm very bold. I can say everything. You stand the risk of being judged according to what you say. But if you keep your mouth and observe the situation and pray, you will get results. I pray that God will make you not to be a careless person. Nobody will talk anyhow. Somebody who will forbid things and speak things without thinking back. Please, whatever your man says, or permitted from his mouth, or speak it, will be against him or her. Do not be in the habit of defining yourself with the words that you speak. So we mentioned number one, the thoughts of your heart. They define you. When you have evil thoughts, you are defined. Two, the words that come from your mouth, when they are evil, they can implicate you and make you to be in trouble. Well, no matter how many significant, significant the word may be, see, I just said it. I said it jokingly. I said it carelessly. There is no joke that you will make carelessly that Satan will not record if it is a negative one. Therefore, do not be in the habit of speaking things that are evil. And in the alternative, if somebody that says evil things against you, that is not your anybody, any man, woman, any in any situation, if he tells you something and says something that you do not like, do not be silent. Rebuke or reject the person. Are you hearing me now? Some people's trouble today as a result of the things that were spoken and they kept quiet. 
because they thought they were respecting the people. If somebody says something that is not to your taste, that you didn't like, rebuke him, rebuke her, reject it, renounce it immediately. And when you do that, that case or that problem will have gotten off your head in the name of Jesus. Words have power. So when they speak words to you, they can make impact in your life if you don't reject them and if they are negative words. And in the alternative, if you speak words that are evil, they will come around. And so that we pick them, I will walk against you. I pray that none of you here, none of us here, will receive the stigma of the word that was spoke in error in Jesus' name. Amen. So in number one, you must understand that God does not want you to have more evil thoughts in your hearts. Two, that you should not speak evil words. Then three, you should not transgress the commandment of God. When people transgress the commandment of God, they are at the danger of being abandoned by God. First John chapter 3 verse 4. First John chapter 3 verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgressed also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is the transgression of the law. God has given us commandments. And God has said expressly that we should keep these things and do them. One of the things that will defile you is when you break the laws of God with impunity. When you violate God and violate His commandments and His laws. That was what Jesus Christ said in the book of John. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. That if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. If you do not keep the commandment of God, you break them, they are called a transgressor of the law. That is to say, you have deviated, you have got walked away, you have moved away from what God said you should do. That one will define you. That is what defines a man. It's not the only thing talks in your heart. It's not the only one to speak. But when you do that, it's contrary to the commandment and the will of God, which is breaking the law of God, defile the man. If you are here and you have defiled the commandment of God by walking away from it, God says it's time for you to come back to him. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 9. What did it say? Proverbs 28 verse 9. A very popular scripture. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be what? Abomination. He that turneth his ear from hearing the law. I'm telling you the thing that they find. If you are not divine, God will hear the prayer. The prayer will not be abomination. But we are talking about things that define the man and how to come out of them. So if that token is here from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination. So it's not an issue of I am praying, I have been praying, I have been fasting. Have you turned your ear from hearing the law? Are you doing the opposite? Are you fighting God by doing what God says you should not do? That is the question. And if you are, the solution is repent. Tell somebody repent. Tell somebody repent. It is repentance that gives us the way out. That is why when Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost, in Acts of Apostles chapter 2 verse 38. Let's look at Acts of Apostles chapter 2. Peter was speaking on the day of Pentecost. And the people were gathered. He spoke to them at length. He said many things. He said, he said, therefore let all Israel, the house of Israel, those assuredly, in verse 38, Acts of Apostles chapter 2, verse 38, but I back it up from verse 36. Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God had made the same Jesus, whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, they were praised in their hearts. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. Tell somebody repent. repent. Tell somebody repent. repent. He says, Repent. And he baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And he 
can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Repentance. You know, there are things that you must do at any point in time. When I said that when evil thoughts come to your heart, I didn't ask you to repent. I said, apply the blood of Jesus. When we talked about the words that you speak, we say, restrain yourself from speaking the words. But when it comes to the sin that the people have committed, a particular sin that has been on you, you are walking, you are under torment, you repent, and you see yourself going again into the nonsense. The Bible says, repent. What do you do? Repent. It is repentance. You must repent. Come out of that sin. Whatever sin that is in your life, that is making you to be defiled, making you to be ungodly, God says you do what? You do repent. Repentance is the answer, is the solution to it. The key to the world is repent. You need to make a deliberate effort to turn from the sinful hands. Listen, it is a matter of decision. You can just make up your mind. Say, ask. I know a lot of people, before the new year will come, they will try to make some vow, make some promises. As for next year, I will not do this again. Although in most cases, they still, they still find they're doing it. But it was a decision. But for the house of God in repentance, you will just come up and say, God, I want this thing to be stopped. Once you make up your mind in the hand of God to get out of a particular situation, God will help you. But when you don't make up your mind, God will not help you. The reason why those people who make worldly decisions or stopping certain things in the following year, why is that they are unable is that they are not making the decision for God. They are making the decision carnally. Hello? But if you make up your mind today, you take up a decision today that God. I want to repent. I want to stop this thing. Maybe you are a liar. I want to stop this habit of lying. Some people, it has become a part and parcel of their life. Anything, any situation, they lie. Where they are, they will lie about it. Where they are going, they will lie about it. They, within their box, with their own money, they will lie about it. That is some people's habit. You can make up your mind today and say, I repent today. And it's only when you make up your mind that the Lord will come to your aid and say, now, nah, I step into your place. So whatever you are, whatever the situation, I want to advise you, I want to say to you this morning, repent. Just tell the Lord, Lord, I heard your word that any transgressor of the law is a man that is defiled. I don't want to be defiled again. I want to stand for you. I repent today. I make up my mind. Once you make up the mind, God will come and visit you. And I see God visiting somebody in Jesus' name. Yeah. I say I come since God visiting somebody in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number four thing that define is what we call self-condemnation or guilt. Self-condemnation and guilt. You know there are things. Well, the one we say genuine self-condemnation, this one is genuine. You did something that you know that was wrong, and you pray God He forgave you, and you confess your sin. This one is beyond confessing sin. You must do something extra. Praise the Lord. You know we are not talking about Satan laying accusation about somebody. Hello. Satan will just come and you know he's an accuser of brethren. You understand? Satan can accuse people falsely. It's not what I'm talking about now. What I'm talking about is when you know that something was wrong somewhere and sometimes ago, you did something wrong to somebody, somewhere, and somehow. And in the process, you pray to God. You confess to God, God forgave you. But you still have the gifts. Why is the guilt still there? Because you have not met the person and apologized and amended your way, which we call restitution. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? When you offend somebody, or you have done something wrong to somebody, in ignorance, and the person was offended, the only way for you to get a clear conscience is to meet the person and apologize to him. Hello? 
This one is not repent as we are talking about now. You have repented. But you have to restitute. You have to tell the person you are sorry. And in most cases, it's difficult. Say, I have prayed to God, God has forgiven me. No. Your conscience is not free. When you see the person, how do you feel? There are some people you know when you see, you don't feel comfortable. Am I right? When you see them, because of the situation, what you said before, what you did before, the encounter you have with them, you meet the brother and say, Brother, I'm sorry, that thing we did that time. I, I was not right. Please. You, you settle it. And, and if, if it's someone that is very far away, you can give him a high call. You can send him a high text message. Apologize. Correct the wrong. Because for you to have a clear conscience, a free conscience between God and man, you must settle your part with man. If you settle alone with God, when you see the man, you will always be guilty. And you will not be free. And you will be defied. Tell somebody, I will not be defied. We are talking about things that defy. That is the reason why. When you look at 1 John chapter 1, 3, the apostle who said something in 1 John chapter 3, we are talking about things that defy. 1 John chapter 3, verse 20 to 23. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our hearts, and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of Him because we keep His commandments. And do those 23. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of the Son Jesus. And love one another as He gives us commandment. Praise the Lord. Please, the point we are making is that you must, of necessity, amend any wrong. You must put right whatever was done wrong. And if you read it further, look at what was said further in Psalm 66, verse 18. A very popular scripture. That if I can guard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. You know that scripture? Verse chapter 66 of Psalm, verse 18. If I regard the iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not uh, hear me. Look, look up. Regarding iniquity means that you know that something is there that has not been corrected. You know that something is there that is missing. You know that something is there that you need to put right. You regard it, you know it, you recognize it, you remember it. If I regard the iniquity in my heart, it's not an issue of I have prayed God has forgiven me. Each time you take a move, all you see the person. All you see the situation, all you remember the situation, even as we are talking now, your mind begins to break, break you. He said, if I regard the iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not answer me. Today, God will answer somebody. I said, God will answer somebody. Yeah. How is he going to answer you when you are defied? You have to correct and amend the wrong. That is what we mean by restitution. Restore that which was irritable. Restore that which was not belonging to you, that you took. And whatever, no, it's like listen. Maybe you stole somebody's slippers or shoes. And you became born again. And say you are born again, you wear the shoe, you are, you are going for evangelism. Hello? You tie the shoe and the color is different. And you are pushing to the person that you stole the shoe from. How will it be? I'm asking, how will it be? You can't be comfortable. Even if you change the color of the shoe. And that is what we are saying. You know, say, bro, when I was not born in you, when I visited you that day, that your shoe that was missing and where all of us were looking for, I was the one that took it. I'm sorry, this is the shoe. <laughs> how come? I'm now born again. All things have passed away. The whole all things have become new. I, I will follow you to that church. You. And by that, you will win souls in Jesus' name. So there must be the need to correct that which was wrong. Look at how Jesus Christ put it in Matthew chapter 5. 
in mighty chapter 5. Look, look at the way Jesus put it. This one that Jesus said was so emphatic, and I love it. In mighty chapter 5, I read it from verse 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there remember it that thy brother had ought against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gifts. Look up. Among the Jews and the synagogue, they have altar. You bring the gift to the altar. As you want to give the gift, you remember that Jobu, your brother, is angry with you. Not that you offended Jobu, but he offended you. He has ought against you. For giving him the small part of the money you have, your own money. Say, so, this is my brother. I beg you money. I told you to give me 100,000. You give me just 50,000. Okay, that's just the blue seat. John Booth, you have no, no justifiable reason to apologize. I'm say, go back to John Booth. Say, John Booth, it is because I don't have much. And I, I made a budget. Please, I will give you when I have. Please, sir. Eh? It's okay, bro. Okay, bro. It is only there you have the power to come and give your money and your offering. If you are going to give offering, you remember that your brother has fought against you. He is holding something against you. Not that you are holding something. He said, Go. Look at verse 23 again. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and then remember that thy brother had ought against thee, he said, Leave there thy gift before the altar, and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer thy gift. Are you hearing it? Leave thy gift in the altar and come and eat. Then verse 24. Leave there thy gift. Leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First be reconciled to thy brother and then come and offer thy gift. Agree with thy adversary quickly while thou art in the way with him, lest at any time. The adversary delivered thee to the judge, and the judge delivered thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Wonderful. Very nice unto thee, thou shalt by no means come out thence, till thou hast paid uttermost fine. This is a serious case. You see, you should agree with the adversary very quickly. Your enemy, somebody has decided to make you his or her enemy. He said reconcile with him, reconcile with her quickly. If not, he will deliver you to the judge. He will say, let him doctor, look at the matter. This man, he did this and I did that. Look at it. He said he's a Christian and he's giving an enemy to my own. I'm not a Christian. I'll be a native doctor too. So I have no, I have not committed offense. He is a committed offense against his God. He said we deliver you to the judge, and God told you to forgive. Am I right? Am I right? Yes. Look at that, verse twenty-five. Verse twenty-five. Agree with the adversary quickly, while thou art in the way with him, lest at any time the adversary deliver thee into the judge. And the judge delivered thee to the office. And thou be cast into prison. Tell somebody I will not be cast into prison. Say, very nice, you to me. Thou shalt by no means come out next. Till thou hast paid the uttermost pardon. Look, some people, because of the, the, the ignorance and lack of wisdom, look up. They became poor. When they were already rich, they paid with the utmost funding because of malice and unforgiveness. Before Satan will take you your case to his shrine, reconcile and make your hands clean. Satan knows the law of God more than you. Are you aware? 
You know what you are not supposed to do. You know what you are not supposed to do. If you dare what you are not supposed to dare, and you don't go on your knees and apologize immediately, and you want to brag, Satan will deliver you to Satan. And you will deal with the purpose for them. That's what they say. That is to say, they will make you to sell everything you have. Pay it dearly. And I pray that will not happen to anybody here in Jesus' name. Amen. What we are saying this moment is that restitution is the answer. We have to correct that which is wrong. It's different from repentance and forgiveness by God. It's purely amending your ways. Whatever was done against me in ignorance, amend it. And when you do that, God will visit you, will forgive you in Jesus' name. Rise up, let us pray. Tell God to have you. Tell God to have mercy on you.
the Lord in heaven. I thank you for today, this day is fellowship. Lord God, I'm asking for the divine presence for your children. Mercy, forgiveness in Jesus' name. Whatever that you have happened in your heart that is a product of evil talk today, by the blood of Jesus is cleansed in Jesus' name. Whatever you have said that is working against you, spoken, declared today, I declare blessing for you in Jesus' name. Whatever transgression we transgressed the commandment of God, broken the commandment of God today, because of the blood of Jesus, you are forgiven in Jesus' name. Whatever restitution, whatever amendment that you need to make, that you have not made today, I declare the grace for you. And when you leave here to be able to make the amendment in Jesus' name, you will right the wrong. Thank you, Lord, for praying and In Jesus' name, for praying. Say, my father, my father, give me victory. Open your mother, pray for victory right now. Victory, 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 victory. Victory, 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 victory. In Jesus' name for prayer. Whatever is your heart desire, victory is yours. Receive the grace. Receive the power. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I cover you all the Lord Jesus. Jesus, they will pray. Yeah.